Server virtualization. Uh, a guy, Kevin, emailed me in this week, and I just want to do a quick video on what hardware I'm actually using. Uh, I shop on uh, eBuy, get all the parts from Amazon quite easily as well, and I will link all the parts in my on my website. Link to this video. So if you do check out jacksgear.co.uk, you'll find um, the, the, this this article will be in there on on the blog side, and it'll list all the parts for you as well. And I'll try and list all the parts in the description below on YouTube for you uh, as well. But very much um, it. It's a, it's a very cheap build. I go for what I can get cheaply that actually does the job that I need to do. I'm not after you know expensive server build because um, actually it's a home, it's a home project. Um, again, if I was a small business, I wouldn't, again, wouldn't go for a server build unless I had loads of money to spend and I was a big corporate company. Then maybe I'll look into server builds because then you're looking at less downtime, uh, you want it to be covered, so engineers were on site to replace the hardware that's when you spend the money on servers because they come with fantastic support. I dealt with a lot of servers in the past, which was Dell's I went for, and they thought support was fantastic. They had a four hour response time to repair your hardware. But when you're a small business or a home project base, you don't want to spend thousands of pounds on a server where well, you can spend that on a decent gaming rig, get more fun out of it. That's how I come across. <laughs> so this build basically much was very much, I went for the cheapest motherboard I can get, and the motherboard had to support um, had to support a couple of things that I had in mind. 32 gig of RAM can support an AMD 8-core um, CPU and, uh, and it'll be able to support a PCI um, card for the uh, RAID controller card and maybe some other spare ports that I can put, uh, maybe a second graphics card in there for, if I need be. Um, if the graphics card is built on, great, because I would only need that for the console side. Apart from that, because my server is now finished and built and I've done it a little while ago, it sits under my bench here and I've got two more of these that sits in my man cave and these synchronise over the internet, which I'll do another video on that. So again, the build went very expensive. So we're looking around. I spent at the time back last year, 2018, on this server, which is my newest one, I spent about £1,500 on the build itself. Um, I don't think that includes that. And basically, um, the most expensive part on this was roughly the hard drives and the controller card as well, because the controller card is about £130. So I brought the, um, I, I'm referring back to my screen to work out what hard drive it's got. Western Digital Blue SSD drives. There's three in the system I've got. They're my cash pool drives. They've got three years warranty on them. Uh, first year, I think, is data recovery. Uh, and they're, and they're, they come three years warranty, it means if one of them fails, I can send it back in the post. They can send the free one straight out, and, they, and it's just an instant swap works perfectly that way. And I went for three, uh, actually no, this build's got four um, Seagate Ironwolf NAS drives. Again, they come with a long-term warranty, so if a drive failed, you can just send it off in the post. Because they're um, raided up um, under unraid, so if one drive fails, I can take it out, data's still safe, that can go off to warranty. A week later, it'll come back as a brand new drive, I can plug it back in, job done. No downtime, data safe. Um, so they were, I bought six on this one, so that was £405, probably a bit more cheaper than that now because obviously it's about a year later. Um, so I bought six, two had spare and four went into the system itself, the three terabytes each. But I recently brought, um, at a time when I did this, I decided I wanted to replace those drives so a bit more bigger. So if you can put bigger drives and this is going to be your, I mean I'm, the way I worked is this is going to be more working data, but I'm going to have like a little NAS box on my desktop here, which can have slightly large drives in there. And what happens is, when I finish a project, I dump the project onto this little NAS box there. Then I can still access if I need be. Other than that, it's off the server as a backup. Um, so I wanted the server to be very minimal disk space. So the server has 15 terabytes of storage. This has got 20 terabytes of storage. So that way I can keep a duplicate of all my projects going on there. Another scenario you can actually do is keep a project on the server and duplicate the folder on the NAS box as well. So if your server does go down for any reason, um, your data is still safe, and that's a very simple solution. We'll talk about that one on another video. But this build was very simple. I didn't want massive hard drive space because I just wanted projects currently working on, on those. Once I finished the projects, they can be archived off, freeing up space for new projects up and coming on it. Simple and stuff like that. And obviously having a large amount of disk space is great for when you run YouTube channels because you always create videos, you always keep your videos on the raw side and you also keep the videos you render out for YouTube just in case you need to go back to them to reference for something else or just in case YouTube loses your videos you can re-upload them <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, so very much so we did we were a basic, basic gigabyte motherboard that was around about 50 quid motherboards. The CPU was a, um, a base in AMD um, CPU which is the uh, FX8350. 
very basic. It's supported at eight cores. That's also an interesting one. That was £60 for the processor. So then my main two parts I, I've got. Then I went for full 32 gig of RAM to go in there. So I got the Hyper Furies uh, Red Series, 16 gigs. I got 32 gigs in that machine, which is perfect. All my unrated boxes have uh, 32 gig total amount of RAM. And that basically is, and it's just buying all the other little bits and pieces. The controller card, which is an LSI controller card, which you buy, I brought off of eBay, because they're quite hard to get hold to, because you need to put them into um, IT mode, they call it. You have to put this new BIOS on it that actually puts it in IT mode. There's a, a video on my channel. If I remember, I'll link it up there for you, where you can turn it into IT mode, which then allows RAID, the unraid server, to literally have full control of the drives on the cards. And those cards will support up loads. So if you've got a, a box, you can fit 32 uh, or 40 hard drives onto it. As long as you've got this, the case big enough for that, those will work. And I had to buy additional cables for the controller card, which is like one pin, one end, and it then gives you four drive cables at the other end. Again, all my details of those cables that I've used and the cards are actually on jacksgear.co.uk as well. So very much, it's simple build. We've got up to with power supply as well. I've got 600 watt power supply. The system doesn't ever use the 600 watt power supply, but it's there if I needed to change drives out, added another processor if I wanted to uh, upgrade it, things like that. It was, was more upgradable, or I could use it for another board if I decided to change the motherboard and things like that with it. Now, going forward, I'm now thinking, I mean, that's ideal solution to run. I run probably about 10 VMs on that and also use it as a um, caching all my data and storage for video files. And that works really, really well. So I have a virtualization server running Microsoft Exchange. I have a file and print server under Microsoft 2012 that runs on there. And I have various um, other ones doing little jobs. I think I've got an FTP server. And then I obviously run on uh, lots of diff different virtual desktops, which works well. So for just under, you're probably getting this, this exact spec I've got here. You can probably get a lot cheaper now because obviously this go about a year or so. Parts go, do go down in price. So I spent £1,500, £1,500 on this build. You could probably get this for a lot less than that now. And that'll get you started. That'll be ideal for virtualization. It works really well. Don't have any issues with bottlenecking, CPU problems. Again, all the VNs running really nice, nicely. Um, they don't neutralize more than sort of like 50% um, or, or less of its CPU, the virtual CPU it uses. So it works really well for the price of it as well. So that's the, the perfect build um, for a cheap, cheap budget solution. You can go a bit more. You can buy a gaming rig um, motherboard sporting more than 128 gig of RAM. And it will work on the Ryzen, the new Ryzen processor, which, which is, I know it's like 20, 30 cores if you wanted to. So if you look for something more decent, a bit more kick in it, and hold a lot more VMs on it as well, then obviously you can go to that expense, so spend a lot more money on that, and then you can literally really open it up. And if I was running a, like a, a remote, a, virtualized, a virtualization desktop solution company, providing remote desktop connections for companies to sort of pay for, I would go for a rising, a rising system with 20 core CPU in it, with over 128 gig of RAM, I would have stick in um, one terabyte SSD um, cache drives all the way through the system uh, and run the VMs on that, making them super fast and super quick as well. And that way you can create like a, your own like cloud solution and that would work really well. That way you can hold more, you can hold more than 10 VMs, virtual desktops itself. My other system in the shed, I've got uh, a, a one box runs all the server VMs and I've got a second box that runs actually 15 physical uh, virtual desktops for 15 users to connect to and that runs basically Windows 10 Pro it has Office and, um, and Outlook so it's very much a simple package some runs like account systems on it as well and that then links to both systems so that runs VM really well and then, and then this box here um, I'm just running it as a storage server at the moment but if anything happens the ones in the shed I can copy the VM straight from the shed straight onto this box and kick it up and running it again and it works perfect as well um, so that way users can still access it. It's, it's really a budgetable solution that works well for me, um, and it depends on your scenario. So if you are looking at um, installing VMs for clients to connect, then I would virtually go for the most important question would be motherboards that's going to support more than 128 gig of RAM and a processor that, that has at least 20 cores in it, giving you those um, to run those VMs on it. That's what I would go for if I was thinking of running as a business and running uh, multiple users and stuff on it as well. So, but apart from that, I'm only running a very few handful of users, about 15 users and stuff. It works well for my solution. 
and, um, and for the price of it anyway. So hopefully that will help you out, Kev. Any more questions, guys, or anybody that's got any questions about like vi virtualization on Unraid, using Unraid, and the best thing about Unraid is it's a one-off license fee you pay, and you get all the free upgrades and stuff. There's no ongoing fees. There's no ongoing upgrades. If you buy the small basic package, that give you th allow you to have three devices, which is three hard drives. If you buy the mid-range package, you can have to have six hard drives in there. Or if you buy the top-range package, that will allow you to have literally unlimited amount of hard drives in it. So the bigger the system you got, the bigger the case you can got, the more hard drives you can put into it. The top package, the top package. On raid license, about 80, 90 pounds. That's it, it's a one-off fee, and you're supported forever based on it. Unless they do a physical massive upgrade where it costs a little bit more, there'll be a smaller fee to add to it. But it's a great way, especially if you're going to start off with a three-disc three, three disc system. You can start on the low unmade license and then move you up to this middle one. That's the basic I did. I started on the basic, I grew to the next level, and then when I decided I need a bit more hard drives in there to get a bit more um, cache drives going, then I went up to the, the top one and I did an upgrade in between them and stuff. Much cheaper way of doing it. So there you go. I'll do some more videos on Unraid, and I'll do some more videos on the virtualization, my setup. So with this video, I'll do uh, another video to talk about the setup and how I've got them set up, what VMs I'm running, and what's on them to give it more detailed as well, running on this hardware that I actually specified itself. And we'll do a nice little blog post on jacksgear.co.uk all about this as well, so you can find that, and we'll attach these videos to it as well for you. So hopefully that helps you out, and I haven't chatted for too long. So anyway, thanks guys for watching. Thanks for uh, new subscribers. Cheers. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button because we've got some new products coming from Linksys to do review with. I've got a VPN route here. So site-to-site -site connections, um, private access, all to come very soon. And I've got some new uh, wireless access points from uh, Linksys as well. And we've got some new switches here because I've got a very much basic desktop switch here. So we're going to upgrade it to a nice business switch, get a bit more speed out of my uh, copying on my servers and we'll do some testing with those as well. So stay tuned, more stuff to come. So thanks for watching guys, cheers.